Hi, this is um, just for you, and I'm Sonny Wayne Fella. I be away for a while, and I, I'm so sorry to my subscribers that um, have not been seeing me for a while now because I've been very, very tied up um, with my studies and then also preparing for my state board that I'll be taking soon. Um, because here in Georgia or here in the States, if you become a counselor or whatever you do, like a nurse or whatever, you have to um, take a state board in order to be satisfied, certified and also licensed to, to act, okay, or to actually do those things. So I've been really preparing for that. So, but today I decided to just um, come back and tell you sorry that I have not been with you for a while but I want to welcome you back okay to my subscribers I know that some of you have not been too happy uh, I realized that one of my subscribers dropped off but I hope you will listen to this um, once more and then try to reconsider <clears throat> okay reconsider coming back um, because I love you all those of my subscribers and I'm still hoping to, to get more but um, you know if a few years ago, I was in one of our West African countries. And why in this country, I was a refugee, actually. I fled the war in Liberia and then um, moved to the Ivory Coast, um, they consider Côte d'Ivoire. And then on, because of the language barrier in the Ivory Coast, it was so difficult to actually communicate. So I had to move to Ghana. Um, and why in Ghana we were able to meet others and eventually we became friends with a mission missionary from the US and he decided to give us a helping hand because we we're actually refugees we fled from the civil war in Liberia so that was the situation um, but then we were able to acquire a house through his instrumentality um, and why in this house we were going through, even though we had a house to live in, but it was empty. Uh, people were calling it a um, warehouse. There was nothing in this, in this, um, this house. Um, but we had little mattresses we were sleeping on and stuff. But at least we had a place, something over our head and we could um, maybe eat something. But things was, was difficult, you know. It is said, uh, teach a man to to fish um, instead of always giving him fish you know then he can do it on his own so that's something that I really wanted so one day I went and asked this good friend of ours if he could give us a helping him by giving us some money to start a little business so we he went ahead and um, give us you know talk to some friends here in the states and they sent some money and he gave it to us and we started this convenience store you know a little mini supermarket um, that's what we started and things picked up things started to work out well we we were being self-sufficient we were um, you know refugee in a foreign country it, it was it was a little bit difficult to start but when we did start people started to get to recognize and notice the the convenience store and they start to come by but most of them came by with the mindset or the tendency of stealing. Um, they would come in our little mini market um, and they would come with a bag under their lapas, especially the lady. And they would pick things from the, the, the shelf and put it in the bag under their lapas. And then when they are turning, you will see that it's puff up. But what can you say? Because they are ladies, you can't tell them, you know, remove what you have on there and they would just walk away so things became difficult the business started to um, go down because we're not getting any turnover so to speak and it was becoming a little bit difficult okay but then what happened one day was um, this man look at it had a plot um, he came to the store the, the mini market one morning and said he wanted to purchase milk for his daughter and we were excited about it because he came to purchase something so we're all okay with it we're good and he bought 
I, I, I actually sold it to him. My mother-in-law was the one caring for the business actually because she was older and she could settle down, you know, sit down and listen to people and wanting to help. So he came and purchased this tin of milk and he left. A few hours later, he came back and accused us of removing the milk from the can and putting gari. I think most of us Africans know what gari or farina is. And he accused us of putting farina or gari in the can and sold it to him. So he went and brought the police. The police came and arrested us, my mother-in-law and myself, and took us to the police station and on the pretext or the allegation that we took out the milk from the can and put gari in, in it. And so they had us sitting there on the bench at the police station for hours. And nobody could rather tell us anything more than that. But then what they did was, after a few hours, maybe four, five, six, seven hours of sitting there, they told us we could go home. Um, we left and went home. But then our little mini market became the place for the police to come and get whatever they wanted. So because of that situation that, they, we, that they felt or we felt was hanging over our head, they would come to the shop or the mini market every day and tell us to give them food, give us sardine, give us luncheon meat, give us bread. Um, under the pretext that, oh, if you give, give this to us, um, we will not prosecute you. We will not um, take you to court. We will not do this. And, and then from the beginning, because being refugee in Ghana, Actually, the country I'm talking about is Ghana. Um, they, they, it became a, a, a habit. We were trying to struggle to survive as refugees. Now these police officers in plain clothes, and some of them came with uniform on and just exploited us. Um, begin to take, so they would come and say they want money. We should give them money. Um, and we give them the little we had. But I, I, it, was, it was just going on a, a whole lot, and I, I felt bad um, about the situation. So I wasn't happy anymore. So I decided to go to the police station and then confront them concerning what was happening. So I went there and I told them that I was a former special task force officer and what they were doing was not right. If they felt we had done something wrong, they need to send us to court so we can defend ourselves. But every day coming to our little mini market that we're trying to struggle to keep it running and to survive on as a family, it wasn't right. It wasn't fair. And if they ever did it again, I was going to take them to the higher authority in Ghana to explain the situation because I don't think they should exploit us if they know we committed a crime. And that's what they did for a while, for weeks. They were coming over and doing that. But after I confronted them about it and told them, you can go ahead and send us to court. We are willing to go to court because we know we did not. We go and purchase things from stores or wholesale and bring it into our mini market. And if you come to us and tell us that we, we took out the, the, the milk and put in farina or gari, then that is not right because we did not do it and we can defend ourselves because why would we want to go and sell farina or gari in a can or milk can to someone knowing that it wasn't it so we had our ground to stand up but they were exploiting us using the situation to exploit because we were what liberians and we we're in ghana and they thought we we're making money because the house we lived in was a huge big old house but people outside felt you know the house was big but as refugees, we really didn't have anything in our house. We were literally sleeping on the floor. We, we had mattresses on the floor that we slept on. And that was how things went on. But we were actually exploited by these people. And I love Ghana. I lived there for many years, for about six, seven years. I lived in Ghana. Actually, it was from Ghana that I came to the States. I left Ghana to come to the U.S. And I love the people there. They were very kind, um, very good to be around. They were, had good um, attitude towards us. 
um, as refugees or Liberians, but there were some of them who saw the opportunity of exploiting and, and, and treating us unfairly and unkindly. And, and that's something um, that, that didn't go down well with me um, and it bothered me for some time because I, I have a daughter who was born in Ghana, you know? I have a daughter, actually two of my daughters were born in Ghana. And knowing that I, they had to walk us to the police station almost every day for over a week, maybe two weeks, just going there every time to sit behind the, their decks, I mean behind some prisoner bench to sit on for no apparent, <coughs> excuse me, for no apparent reason, I don't have COVID, so I just want to let you know that I took all my shots and I'm doing good, all right? So me just coughing, <laughs> it's really, it's really distract you, all right? But um, before I go any further, I would like you to please um, like, subscribe, and please share this um, video. Um, also, I want you to hit the notification bell because it is important for me. Um, that will help me to be able to share my video with others uh, we'll be going now to load my videos on you on um, Facebook Instagram and wherever you can think I'm gonna be sending them there um, but as I said in the beginning I'm sorry to my subscribers and those who love to watch my videos that um, I just had to go and do stuff so I couldn't load any video but I want to welcome you back once more. Thank you so much for being patient with me. I love you guys. And I hope you have a great day. All right, so I will be talking to you soon. And you have a wonderful time. See ya. This is your man Isaac. And I hope you enjoyed what I just told you. Just to be mindful that as we travel, we should be very careful what, what happens out there. And Sometimes I leave lasting, you know, mark on, on our hearts and on that country. I'm not saying Ghana is a bad country. I love it. I lived there for six, seven years. Um, but there are some bad apples, you know, that you could encounter um, when you travel. So this was just an experience that I had. And I just wanted to, you know, let you know. Okay. Subscribe now, please. I love you. Talk to you soon. Bye.